Hello all, um, welcome to section 1.4, Business Aims and Objectives, okay? Uh, it's a relatively long PowerPoint, um, but um, I'm going to try and sort of skim and scan through quite a bit of it. Um, obviously sort of spend a little bit more time going through the individual PowerPoint slides, okay? Um, they're also within um, the Unit 1 file section on Teams, you'll find something called Business Unit 1 Notes. Okay, and for this section is from page 45 onwards. So if you're struggling with anything, refer to that, put a message on Teams or email me. I'll write this up later. Okay, but um, yeah. Looking for the learning objectives, there's quite, quite a few, but basically we're looking at uh, the aims and objectives of businesses, how they set them, why they're important, how they change, um, the different stakeholders in the business, and how the aims and objectives impact those stakeholders. So to begin with, um, let's maybe try and establish what is um, meant by uh, aims and objectives. Okay, so aims are essentially like a goal um, for a business to aim for, and then um, objectives are going to be how they go about achieving those aims. Okay, um, so all businesses have have um, have aims and objectives, what they're trying trying to achieve. Okay, same with like you see, a football teams, a school has aims and objectives, and so on. Now, why do businesses set aims? Okay, so it helps them give them a sense of direction. So, if, you know, if we use Flannery Lights High School as an example, um, you know, they want to try and achieve a certain percentage of A to C at GCSE, and it just gives them a way to sort of think about it. it gives us a way of thinking how we're going to go about achieving that. Okay. Um, give um, the employees an idea of how the business is going to go in the future and um, also sort of trying to put things in place uh, to try and meet those aims. So if um, Flemish High School want to improve how many A star to C there is in GCSE English, for example, well, maybe they would sort of put into place trying to get some additional teaching or um, some breakout groups or getting the department some more um, electronic resources anything along those lines okay so you've got the aim you're going to sort of see what the future is and then you can sort of plan around it okay so I've touched upon there okay so aims are the uh, overall view of how the business is going to go and the objective is going to be how they go about achieving them okay so for example if we we're talking about you personally maybe your overall aim is to become a doctor okay so that is your aim personal aim and then you're going to have various objectives in order to achieve that okay so your objective might be to have um, three A's in a level okay by um, a certain time frame okay and then you're going to want to that's going to be objective number one objective number two might be to um, get a degree in medicine by, I don't know, 2028 20, or whatever, okay? And then your third objective might be to be, um, to be in the um, radiology department of Aberystwyth Hospital by 2032. So these are all, you know, you've got your aim of being a doctor and then you've got the objectives that are going to make it possible for you to achieve that ob objective, that aim, okay? Now, when we're measuring objectives, I've sort of alluded to it a little bit while I'm talking, okay, but we need to make sure they're specific, okay? So if we take that example that I just said about um, becoming a doctor, all right, um, your, t you know, your objectives need to be smart, okay? They need to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-specific, okay? So you could say, um, get good A-levels, okay? Well... That's not particularly specific, is it? Okay, like what does good actually mean? What does good look like? Okay, um, is it measurable? Okay, well, do you know whether you've passed or failed that? Okay, um, you know, is it, um, you know, if you say three A's, okay, well, you know if you've succeeded that, okay, if you get two A's and a B, you know that that objective has not been met, okay? Um, you've got achievable um, and relevant and realistic or whatever. Okay, now, so you've got it, you know, if if you are not doing particularly well in school, then maybe 
setting an aim to be um, a doctor isn't isn't particularly realistic or achievable or whatever. Okay, um, so setting yourselves goals that you, 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 you're likely to not achieve. Okay, it's all about um, setting ones that are achievable. Also, you need to set yourself a time. Okay, because we could all say, right, I want three A's in A level. Okay, well, you can do that. You know, you could you could essentially study for the next twenty years to get those three A, A's in A level. Okay, giving yourself a time frame. Okay allows you to um, meet that objective and if you don't meet it then you can adjust it a little bit okay all right so this is going to be the same for businesses so their overall aim might be to um, you know increase their increase their profit okay well you want to say that you know if you're going to make a specific objective and or is measurable on that you could say um, in the next um, three months we wish to achieve Five thousand pounds worth of profit. Okay, that is very specific. It's measurable. Okay, the five thousand pounds you achieve it or not. You've got time specific. Next three months. Okay, and um, obviously we could say that that is probably achievable. Okay, and is relevant to um, making more profit. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about smart objectives. Don't want to sort of that. Okay. So what are the typical objectives and aims of businesses? Okay. Um, well, you for most for a lot of businesses that first start out, their their objective is just going to be to stay open, okay, to survive, all right. So that's why it's important um, in the initial stages of any particular business. Once they've gone beyond that stage and they can look at more um, lofty ambitions, more lofty objectives, okay. Um, businesses obviously want to try and make as much profit as possible. They want to try and keep their customers happy. Um, they want to increase their market share, okay? Now, market share is, if you imagine sort of a pie chart, okay, is you've got 100% of sales in that business represented in that pie chart, okay? And each different business in a, in a particular market will, um, will take a percentage share of that. So an example could be the um, takeaway market in Newtown, okay? So you'd probably say that maybe McDonald's has a 50% market share, okay? Uh, maybe Enzo's has a 25% market share. Uh, KFC has 10% and Bad Rallies has 5%, okay? Now, you could maybe say that a, a, an objective for, um, um, for Enzo's is to increase their 25% to 30%, okay, by increasing the sales and trying to attract people from maybe buying a McDonald's or Baba Ali's or wherever, okay. Some businesses, okay, operate, operate to help the community, okay, and large businesses uh, will also want to be shown that they're operating ethically and they have some social objectives that help the people in their community and in the local area, okay. Um, other businesses are going to have maybe environmental objectives, okay? Relatively important now for a lot of businesses, okay? Um, some businesses have maybe non, that are non-profit, okay? That aren't looking to make a profit. Um, their objectives are going to be more sort of service and satisfaction based than uh, providing things for local community compared to maybe a uh, a profit. Okay, so um, it's always quite good to use your objectives to monitor how well you're doing. Okay, so if you look at your objectives and you've set smart ones, you can see whether you are um, pass or failing um, those objectives because you've made sure that they're measurable. Now, um, if you do, if it doesn't look like you're going to achieve those objectives, then you can make, you can readjust those, or sometimes you maybe even exceed those um, performance measurements, and you will just readjust your objectives to go along with that. Okay. All right. So as your business grows, you might want to um, might want to change. Okay. Um, I've sort of touched upon that. Um, hopefully, you understand. Okay, um, some businesses are going to change with various factors, uh, how their aims and objectives uh, change. Okay, so it's, like I said, 
if you look at internal factors, okay, so some business is going to go from just simply surviving, okay, and the business is going to mature and it's going to develop a brand name. It's going to change to um, growing the business, increasing market share, increasing profit levels. Okay, and when a lot of businesses become large, okay, and they're well established and they're pretty much going to turn a profit most years, then they start to um, develop more sort of a more, bit more of a social conscience. Okay, and they t they tend to sort of change their objectives to be more um, social or environmental. Okay, you can probably think of a lot of um, large businesses that try and back sort of social uh issues you know like maybe like you look at uh nike with black lives matter and things like that okay um external factors that are outside of the business's control can also impact how whether businesses change their aims and objectives okay so um you know there's been a lot of treaties and law changes recently that means businesses have got to, got to become more environmentally friendly and carbon neutral so that changes the aims and objectives of the business okay uh, a change in the economy okay so how well things are performing so right now you see during corona um aims and objectives of businesses are going to are going to change okay um because of their expectations are going to have um dropped okay of what they're going to be able to achieve this year and next year 